Hello class, welcome to the lecture for 7-2 from the Forrester textbook. We are in the chapter all about different kinds of functions. How would you know, given a bunch of data, what would be the best graph to match the data, and then once you decide, how are you going to make it fit? How are you going to find the curve of best fit? This is a process called regression. There's a whole lot more into it, which they'll go into if you take statistics, but this is the basics and there's also logs in this chapter. So 7-2 is about graphing, but before we get into graphing, I wanna ask you, why graph? Why is that important? Why does it matter if we can graph functions or not? Does the choice of our graphs matter? Think about that. So here is a graph that matters a great deal. A great deal many decisions are being made based off of this graph. This is a graph of the number of human beings living on planet Earth in the millions over time. And as you can see on this graph, there are three different theories at present about what's going to happen to human beings. We are right there at the end of the little blue curve, and it's now the choice of are we going to follow the red? Is that true? Are we about to do the orange? Is that true? Or is the green about to happen? And so, for example, a billion people's lives in China uh, were affected by the change of the one-child policy based off of the fact that the Chinese government went from thinking that the red to the green uh, was going to happen. So there are enormous, enormous daily consequences to what do you think is the best graph to fit this particular set of data, what people in power think is the right equation to match the number of people on this planet. Is it an exponential? Is it a logistic? Is it a linear? What's going on? So this is, this is, this is pretty important. That's probably about the most important one I could think of, but other graphs matter too. So, in this section, in 7-2, we will be talking about some of the basic shapes of graphs, some of the things that you need to know of the most fundamental kind, the most average, simplest sort of kind. And if you remember, when we did, at the start of the year, we had in chapter one, a sort of broad overview of the types of functions that there are, and some of the things that we said were linear, quadratic, power, and exponential. Now, we've spent a long time talking about periodic functions because you never had seen those before this year in such depth as we did first semester, but now there is a need for you to understand how to make graphs of the other kinds. So what we need to be able to do is we need to be able to make equations, we need to be able to look at graphs and see just from a collection of dots, oh, this is probably that kind of curve, we then need to make that use that equation to plug in some particular x's and either extrapolate or interpolate more points along the curves or points within the curve between the data that we had. And we need to then be able to go backwards and say, well, assuming that this curve holds true, where, what is the x value where this particular y value happens? And one of the ways that we're gonna do that is we're gonna look and say, what is the curvature and math talk concavity of this curve, okay? So the things we need to go through today are linear, quadratic, power, and exponential. And these should all be broadly familiar to you, but maybe you haven't practiced how to do them, and I'll especially show you how to do them in your calculator. So linear, as you recall, is y equals mx plus b. That's the one that you always want to jump to for what makes a line. Uh, and the calculator has a wonderful way to do that for you called linear regression, which is abbreviated in your TI as LINREG. 
Next up, uh, there are good old quadratic functions, and we're going to be looking at graphs. So I'm going to use vertex form, that there's going to be the center of the bowl or the mountain, that that point right there, the vertex, is at h comma k. And so that'll be prominently displayed in our equation. And the calculator has a wonderful way to show you that called quadreg, where you have to put in at least three points, and then it can make a parabola equation for you. Uh, then we're also going to have power functions where there's a power on X and of course there's power regression in your calculator and then lastly there's exponential functions and these is where X is the exponent so it's exponential and that is called not surprisingly X reg so First up, linear functions. These are things that you should know very, very well. You did a lot of these. This is what Algebra 1 is all about. And the original one, the mother of all linear functions, is y equals x. And so you get kind of used to just maybe only thinking in terms of moving it up, and that's y equals mx plus b. How far up did you move it? That's the b, and the slope is m. But when we get into calculus and most other math beyond sort of elementary level basic stuff, slope intercept is not your friend. Having to figure out B is hard. What is much more useful is point slope where you say, okay, so I moved somewhere right there and then I did the slope through that point. Why would I bother then backtracking and finding what the Y intercept is? I just care about the fact that I went through that point with this slope and boom, you're done with slope intercept. Ask anybody in calc, they'll say slope intercept is more uh, work and not worth it as opposed to point slope. So this, I'm hoping I can sell you on this. I hope there can be some maybe some testimonials from some calc students to say slope intercept is more work, point slope is more fun because I know you believe the opposite. So here are some examples. If you look at these graphs from the book here in 7-2, uh, there are some examples of some lines. Slope is rise over run. This is a negative slope here in the middle, and there is a positive slope there on the end. So hopefully you remember all that kind of thing. If we wanted to make an equation for this line right here, we would say, all right, so if I went from 5 to 10 in the x's, that's a run of uh, 5. But if I went from 19 to 6 in the y's, that is a rise, negative rise. That is a rise of negative 13. So my rise is negative 13. My run is 5. My slope is negative uh, 13 over 5. Now, I could use that and try to backtrack and find the horrible fractional number that is the B of where this hits the uh, Y axis, but I don't really care about that. So I'm going to do uh, slope, uh, not slope intercept, but point slope form. And then I'm done. Then I don't have to work so hard at finding out all the other data. Now, can we do this in the calculator? Can we take this same set of points of 519 and 10, six and can we put that in the calculator so let me show you how we can put that in the uh, calculator instead and make it an equation make the calculator do all that work for us now it's going to be a horrible fraction but oh well so this is in, this is in general this is the introduction to how to put data in your calculator we've probably done this before i hope if not, pay careful attention. We want to turn to our statistics section. We want to enter data, that's statistics, and we want to edit the set of data that we have. So I'm going to press the stat button, then I'm going to press enter, and now I'm in to editing lists of data. You're going to have one list for your x's, one list for your y's. In my case, because I don't have anything in this calculator, I'm going to put my x's in L1 and my y's in L2. So the first x that we had was 5, and the second x that we had was 10. And now corresponding with that 5, I need this to match up, is uh, there was a y of 19, and then there was a y of 6 on the second one. So now I've got two sets of data in my, two points of data in my calculator. And if I wanted to see those, I could turn a stat plot on, 
And then I could do zoom number nine is zoom stats. And there's those two dots. If I now want the calculator to do a linear regression and make the lines for me from that, I press stat and I move over to the calc column. Please calculate for me a linear regression right there. So now if I just press enter, it will uh, calculate for me the two different um, M and B. But if I wanted to be able to graph that, to see the graph of that, I could then go down and say, no, don't just do lin reg, but put it in a var, the special y vars of functions called y1. So look at this calculator and you can see it's going to put my function, it's going to store it in y1. Now you fancy pantsy 84 people have an option called store EQ, I believe it is called, and that's where you can store this data this equation, it'll store it for you, same thing. So I do that, I execute that command, and now if I go look at my Y1, it's automatically put that in there. I look at the graph, and lo and behold, this data point goes, uh, this equation goes through my two data points. So that's awesome. Um, we talked about how to put linear in your calculator. Uh, next up, uh, we need to discuss the next kind of function, that is quadratic. Now, a parabola, the name of the shape, comes from the Greek meaning the path that is thrown. And of course, everything in our uh, lives, when we throw it, makes a parabola through the air. So this is a very, very useful bit of data for physics and for describing real life phenomenon in general. So um, we said before that the parent function for all of this is y equals x squared. And there is standard form, which you may have done a lot with, and you probably need that a lot because it's what lets you do the quadratic equation and other stuff. And it's usually what you're given, but it's not nearly so helpful as vertex form. Vertex form is much, much better for graphing, uh, but the calculator is gonna give us standard form. So we need to be able to move back and forth between both. So. Um, the, the two forms require you typically to complete the square, so you can't forget that from Algebra 2 to go from standard to vertex. You just have to expand for going from vertex to standard, but the other way is hard to work. So here we have a particular path. Here we have a, uh, a particular equation that we can see and trying to figure out uh, what the uh, equation for this graph is, is a bit tricky. So the two things we need are for y equals uh, a x minus h quantity squared plus k is we need that h and k, where's the center, and then we need how different is this from a normal graph. So you have to think about a normal graph. A normal graph goes one over one up, two over four up, okay? So this is gonna be a bit trickier, we're going to have to think about this, we're going to have to take this graph and say, all right, I went to the center. Where's my center? Well, it's three over, and then it looks like we're going by twos here. So this center is there at three comma 90. So that's going to get me everything but the A. So that's, that's that much. And then the question becomes, where am I going to get the A. You could plug in certain X and Y and try to solve for it, or hopefully you sort of broadly remember that the generic parabola is something that went one over, one up, two over, four up, three over, nine up, and so on. It's the squares. So did I go one over, one up? Well, obviously not. I went uh, one over and then I went four down. So one over and four down means that this graph is not the normal parabola, it's one that's been flipped upside down and it's four times stretched out. We've got a vertical dilation of negative four. That's what this A does. So that's gonna go away and we're gonna say that the equation for this is negative four X minus three quantity squared plus 90. So the calculator will do that for you. Again, you're gonna just put in data into the stats section, and then instead of doing lin reg, you're gonna do quad reg. So I won't show you that, that's pretty straightforward. Uh, that's pretty easy to do, but it does give you ax squared plus bx plus c. So less desirable. Quad reg. <clears throat> All right, next up, uh, three of four things that we need to discuss are power functions. Now power is when there's a power on x. 
not when there's an exponent on x that's exponential. So watch out for that. Um, here are some examples of what they look like. You're probably used to some of the most famous of these are y equals x squared, y equals x cubed. Um, maybe less familiar, y equals 1 over x. That could be thought of as x to the negative 1. So you got to be able to deal with that. But um, again, the calculator will graph a lot of it for you. You just need to be able to create these equations from data. So lock it in your mind. Power y equals ax squared. Uh, to the b, that that's, that's the kind of equation. And don't get it twisted, you can't do a times x and then to the b, you have to do to the b first. Exponents come first. So here we have an equation, a graph, that we need to find an equation for, and we've got some sample data points. So we said that the generic equation is y equals ax to the b. So let's plug in our data points and see what that gets us. Well, that gets us one equation where we say, okay, the y is 108 and the x is 6 and we don't know b. So that's one equation. And if I look at that first data point, I said, okay, the y was 4 and the x was 2 and that was to the b. Boy, what can I do with these two equations? Now, you probably, you might not have seen this before. This might be a bit of a ninja move, so brace yourself. You learned in algebra that you can add equations, subtract equations. Now, we're going to divide equations. Okay? So, watch, watch what that does here. So, 108. 8 divided by 4. Well, 4 goes into 10 two times, remainder 2, and so then that is 27 is uh, 108. So I just divided those two. 108 divided by 4. And now this part, I'm going to write it out longhand. Okay, let me, let me write it all out longhand here so we can show you. We're saying 108 divided by 4 is a times 6 to the b over a times 2 to the b. So what about these A's here? What about these A on top of A? What can I do with that? Well, I can cancel those. And I said, so therefore 27 equals 6 to the B over 2 to the B. Now, 6 to the B over 2 to the B, that's, you, you can do the B's separately or you can do the B's together. So I mean 27 equals 6 over 2 quantity to the B, right? Because they're both getting raised to the power of B. So that's not a big deal. So six over two is three. And so now we're saying, what power do I put on three to get 27? Well, three times three is nine, and nine times three is 27. So the third power. So B equals three. All right, so now I'm gonna go back to my second equation. Four equals A times uh, two, but I know B now is three. So that's saying that 4 equals a times 8, divide both sides by 8, a equals 1 half. So that means, final equation here, I can plug in all the pieces, y equals 1 half x to the third. That is what this is an equation for. Now, that was a lot of work, but you need to be able to do that. This is a new skill, so I want you to learn how to divide equations, but of course, the calculator will do it for you if you put in those two data points and you say power reg those two data points, then it will spit out 0.5 and 3 for the number out front and the exponent. But you've not seen this before, so I will require you to demonstrate that you know how to divide equations eventually, okay? So watch out for that. Last of all, last thing and then we're done, exponential functions. X is the exponent, so that's exponential. And these all have one thing in common. They look like power functions, but they're not. When you're looking at these, they don't go through the origin. That is the key thing. If you have an exponent, you know, x to the third, you plug in zero, you're still gonna get zero. If you have something to the x, you plug in zero, you're gonna get one. So it's not possible for an exponential function to go through the origin. A lot of times, that's the only way to tell. We'll learn some other tricks later. But for now, origin versus no origin, okay? So here we've got another graph that we've got to try to figure out. Now, this one, 
you could get some terrible decimals and um, figure out this stuff, uh, but at this point in that, I think I've already shown you how to divide equations, so I'm not, I'm not gonna be super interested. I'm willing to let you do this one in the calculator. So let's do that. Let's go over to the calculator. Ah, and this will be a chance for me to show you what to do when you've got a bunch of old data. So if you press the stat button and you go into edit, there's that linear data that I had before. Bleh. And you might have tons of data. So move up onto the name of the, uh, the list, L2 in this case, press clear, enter. And that just cleared all of L2. Move up to L1, clear, enter, cleaned all that up. Okay, so my X's were two and five, and my Y's corresponding were 10 and six. So now if I do zoom stat, uh, you can see that I've got uh, two points and I want to curve through them exponentially. So I'm going to press stat, move over to calc, move down to exp reg, choice number zero. And again, I'm lazy and so I want it to store it under y vars in y1. So here it comes up, and this is why I didn't bother making you divide it by hand, is that it's a horrible bunch of decimals. Uh, you saw that I stored it in y1, so here you can see in y1, look how many decimal places it did. Plush. So now if I hit graph, you can see that it has made a lovely curvy line that zooms through it all. Now that doesn't look super duper curvy, so let me zoom standard, and you can see that those two data points were up there, and the curve that we made is indeed bending slowly to go through all of them exponentially. So that is how you get a uh, exponential regression. We talked about uh, linear regression, quadratic regression, power regression, and exponential regression. You need to keep straight the generic forms of lines, parabolas, powers, and exponentials. All these need to be part of your working vocabulary. Not only what do they look like, but what do they uh, have as default equations. And a couple of them have two forms of the equation. Bleh. So, this is a bit to get into your brain. We're going to have a bit of time to chew on this, but you got to be thinking about, okay, how am I going to know them when I see them? And I will see you in class.